Hi guys, I'm Joshua Hunter. I'm the head chef at the Holland Holland Shooting Grounds in Middlesex. Uh, so today we're going to do a simple and classic recipe, which is uh, spaghetti bolognese. Uh, it's possibly the most important thing that you can learn how to cook if you're uh, going off to university. It was certainly the first thing that I learned how to cook. I think my mum taught me how to make this when I was about 15. Uh, so I'm just first of all just going to talk you through the ingredients that you need to have. Uh, so I've got for this, we've got three onions, three carrots and three sticks of celery. Um, I've got some flat leaf parsley, some rosemary, some thyme and some oregano. Uh, we've got a piece of parmesan cheese, some dried spaghetti. Uh, I've got 1.2 kilos of beef mince. Uh, this is 10% fat mince. You don't want to use uh, mince that's too lean because otherwise, uh, as you're cooking it for a long time, it will just end up really dry and a lot of the flavor comes from the fat. Um, then we've got some tin tomatoes. So I've got two types of tomatoes. I've got uh, these whole Samanzano tomatoes and I've also got some finely chopped tomatoes. Um, it's worth spending a little bit more and getting good quality tin tomatoes. It will just add so much more to the flavor of the finished sauce. And then we've also got a uh, jar. This is a 500 ml jar of passata as well, which is gonna go in there. One pack of beef stock. And I've got a bottle of old wine that's been open for a while. Uh, you can use any sort of red wine will be fine for this as it's all going. Okay, so first and very crucial stage is the browning of the mince. Um, so I've got my mince here ready to go. Uh, I've got a heavy base pan like this. You should be able to cook the whole thing in one pan. So a pan like this, um, with sides that come up quite high is good because you'll be able to use it to brown the mince, uh, to sweat down the vegetables, and then to cook the entire sauce through. Um, you want the uh, pan on quite a high heat when you're searing the mince. Um, and I've just got some rapeseed oil that I've put uh, a generous amount into the bottom, just covering the bottom of the pan. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna break the mince up into pieces. It's really important to brown it in batches. If you were just to chuck it all in at once, you wouldn't get any colour and it would just start to sweat. Colour is, uh, a lot of chefs will refer to it as flavour. So as you're creating the colour, you're creating the flavour in the finished dish. So you just want to leave it for about 30 seconds without stirring it. This will allow colour to develop on the bottom of the mint. Then I'm just going to start just gently just moving it around the pan. And then I'm just going to take a slotted spoon and I'm going to take the mince out. That way you're leaving some of the fat in the pan so when you brown your next batch of mince you've still got some fat remaining. Then a little splash more oil. And we're gonna do the second batch. We're gonna be able to fit this in three batches. And it's important to season as you go as well. When you're seasoning, it's always better to season from a height. Uh, that way you don't get clumps of salt landing in one particular pot. You're sort of spreading the salt throughout. If your pan looks too dry, just use a little splash extra of oil.
Okay, so I finished browning off my mints, and afterwards, there's you will have the caramelized stuff in the bottom of the pan. So what you want to do is you just want to take a little splash of water while the pan is still hot. This is called deglazing the pan. And you just want to scrape it with your wooden spoon. And you're just lifting all of that color and that flavor off the bottom of the pan. And the great thing about this is you're also sort of cleaning the pan at the same time. So then you can afterwards immediately just start sweating your vegetables in the pan. I'm just going to tip all of that onto my mints. Okay, so now I'm just going to talk you through what you want to do with your veg. Um, so the Italians call this uh, the sofrito. Uh, so what we've done is I've just diced up these onions into like a fairly small sort of half centimeter dice. Um, and then what I think is the key bit is with your, uh, your celery and your carrots that you're going to grate them. So what that does is it just sort of helps them to break down when they're cooking and it gives a really nice sort of body to the sauce at the end. Uh, it's much nicer as well than having big chunks of carrot and celery which never fully break down into the sauce. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to peel the carrots. And then using just a normal box grater, I'm going to grate it onto this sort of medium sized holes here. Okay, so now it's time to sweat the veg. So I'm just gonna start with a good splash of oil in the bottom of the pan. So we've got everything grated down. We've got our chopped onions, we've got our grated carrot, and we've got our grated celery. I'm just gonna put this on on a medium heat. Get everything into there. As you can see, it looks like quite a lot of veg. Uh, it's gonna sweat right down and it's gonna really form the base of the sauce. Uh, it's important to make sure at this stage that you get plenty of seasoning in as well. So I'm going to do some cracked black pepper. And a good couple of pinches of salt. And now the idea is you're just going to sweat this all the way down for about 10 to 15 minutes until everything's gone really nice and soft and translucent. Uh, you're drawing moisture out of the veg and you're also uh, converting the starches into sugars, which gives a really nice sweetness into the base of the sauce. Okay, so now what we're going to do is we're going to make what's called a bouquet garni. Uh, so in here, I've got a couple of pieces of oregano. I've got some lovely rosemary and I've got some thyme. And I'm also just gonna pop three bay leaves in there. And all I'm going to do is I'm going to take a piece of butcher's string. Any sort of kitchen string will work for this. And you just basically want to start near the bottom and just carefully wrap it around a few times. Nice and tight. That's going to keep everything together when it's cooking in the sauce. And it'll be easy to remove at the end when you've finished. There we go, we have a nice little bouquet garni, which will add loads of flavor. Um, this is a really important skill for cooking. Whenever you're making any sort of a stock or uh, any sort of a stew, it's always fantastic. If you can just add this in, it will completely change the, the dish. Okay, so now if you come and have a look, the veg has all been sweated right down. You can see that all the moisture has come out. Um, it's nice and soft. The onions have gone translucent. 
Uh, and into this, I'm going to add, I've got some crushed garlic. I've got a whole head here of garlic that I've just crushed down. You can either use um, a garlic crusher, you could use a microplane also just to grate it down. That's just gonna go in now. And I'm gonna give that a little cook out. It doesn't take long, you just wanna cook the raw flavor out of the garlic. Okay, so next we're gonna add in our tomato puree. Um, you wanna buy a good quality tomato puree, uh, double concentrate. Uh, I'm gonna use half a tube of this. Um, it's really important, it adds a load of depth and uh, umami into the dish. So all of that in there like that. And now it's really important that you cook this out as well. So I'd spend about five minutes now just allowing on a gentle heat just to allow this to caramelize. Um, that will reduce, it's quite acidic and it will just reduce the acidity and give it a really nice deep flavor. Okay, so next stage, uh, now that you caramelize your tomato puree is we're gonna put all of this wine in. So, straight on to the sofrito. And now it's, I'm just gonna take the heat up to a medium high heat. And it's just really important now that you cook off all of the alcohol in the wine. You don't want there to be any sort of taste of raw alcohol in the finished uh, sauce. So by boiling it and reducing all the wine out, you're gonna remove all the alcohol and you're just gonna get a deep sort of underlying flavor into the sauce. Okay, so now the wine's reduced and the alcohol's cooked off. I'm gonna put my mints back in. You can see that the sauce is made up of about 50% mints and 50% of the sofrito, the vegetables. And now into this, we've got our finely chopped tomatoes. We've got our larger plum tomatoes, which are gonna cook down and break down as we're cooking. We've got our um, half liter of passata. We've got our beef stock. And what I'm gonna do now as well is just, you see there's quite a lot of left in the uh, jar of passata. I'm just gonna put a little splash of water and just give that a, I'm gonna pop the lid back on, give it a little shake, and then you're not wasting any of the flavor. Just gonna give that a little stir. And basically now you just want enough liquid that it's sort of covering all of the, all of the, uh, the mints. Give it a little bit more liquid. So it's probably about a liter of water that's gone into there, as well as the tomatoes and the passata. And now we're just gonna bring the sauce up to the boil, pop in the bouquet garni, and once it's come up to the boil, we're gonna turn the temperature down and this is gonna cook for a couple of hours at a really low temperature. Okay, so I'm just gonna show you a great little uh, chef-y tip. So you take a piece of uh, parchment paper, we're gonna fold it in half, half again, And then again once more and finally one more time so you've almost made like a little uh, paper plane there then I'm just going to trim it down to size so the best way to do this is to measure halfway into the middle of the pan so that comes to there I'm just gonna take a sharp knife or a pair of scissors. 
just cut across like that. And then that is going to make a perfect little lid that you can put on. This is called a cartouche. Um, we use it all the time when we're cooking. Uh, so what we're gonna do is we're just gonna pop that onto the top of the sauce. As you can see, it fits nicely. And now we're just gonna put the sauce down onto a really, really gentle simmer uh, on a low heat. Uh, you just want a few bubbles rising to the surface. Uh, that's going to, what the cartouche is gonna do is it's gonna stop a skin from forming on this top but it's still gonna allow any excess moisture to uh, be released from around the outside. So the sauce will reduce down nicely. Um, so at this stage, you can decide how long you wanna cook it for. Um, sometimes in Italy, when they make bolognese, they'll leave it on all day on just a very, very low heat. So you, your house will smell amazing if you do it like this uh, and you just have it on a super low heat cooking all day. If you want to, for it to be ready quicker, as I said, two, two and a half hours on a very gentle, low to medium heat, just simmering away gently will be perfect as well. Okay, so now it's time to cook your spaghetti. Um, just any good quality uh, supermarket spaghetti will be fine. Uh, you want to have heavily salted boiling water. Uh, normally the rule that they say is about a teaspoon of salt per litre of water. Uh, make sure that it's up to a rolling ball before you put the spaghetti in. Um, a good trick is to twist like this, and then when you release, it spreads out evenly. Okay, so now, as you can see, the sauce has been cooking for just over two hours, just really gently sort of blipping away on the stove. Um, this is pretty much where you want it to go. It's got a nice consistency where there's still enough liquid, but it's just holding the meat uh, and all the veg. Um, you don't want it to go any dry because the pasta will absorb some of the moisture and you'll end up with a dry uh, finished dish. But this is perfect. You've got that lovely, super rich tomatoey base. Um, it's got really a really rich, beefy flavor. Um, this is also a great thing to learn because once you know how to make a bolognese, you can do anything. You can make a chili con carne, you can make a shepherd's pie. It's all just slightly varying the ingredients. So obviously for a chili, you'd be putting in things like sweet smoked paprika and uh, kidney beans, but the basic method is exactly the same. Uh, so definitely a good one to be learning. Okay, so pasta is cooked. You want it just to be a little bit al dente, so it's still got a little bit of bite to it. Um, that's been cooking for about 10 minutes. Um, so I'm just going to show you how to dress one portion. So you want to make sure that it's drained nicely. We've got this lovely bolognese sauce. I'm going to put a couple of spoonfuls into the pasta Let's give it a really good mix around I'm going to put some chopped flat leaf parsley into it let's give it another mix you could use basil if you like basil And then I'm just going to plate up. And then just finish off with the rest of the sauce over the top. And I'm just gonna finish this off with some grated aged Parmesan cheese. And that's it. And yeah, that's it. It's just a simple spaghetti bolognese. Um, it's a really great cheap dish to cook and uh, one that hopefully you enjoy making.